Hi, this is Steve. This is another video in the series on making generative art. In this video, we're going to be looking at sine and cosine. Sine and cosine were essential in making this art as well as this piece. What this video really ought to be called is the wonky circle and meandering lines video because that's really the essential things that sine and cosine do for us. I'm not going to do a huge lesson in trigonometry. I don't think you need a thorough understanding of it in order to use the sine and the cosine in generative art. But I want to go over a little bit here. So we're looking at this right triangle. This is the angle we're going to be thinking about here. And this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side to this angle. And this is the hypotenuse in a right triangle. So if you take the opposite side to this angle and put it over the hypotenuse right here, that's going to give you the sine of this angle. If you take the adjacent side and divide by the hypotenuse, that gives you the cosine of this angle. This is the mathisfun.com site. I'll leave a link to this in the video description. This is a lovely illustration of how sine and cosine affect triangles and circles. And here is an illustration of how sine waves are related to circles. I have an example here that I'm going to go over to show how sine and cosine can be used. Uh, here I'm showing a sine wave. So the sine wave has an amplitude. That's how high this wave goes. It has a frequency. That's how many dips there are. If I change this frequency to one, I get one wave. If I change this to three, I get three waves. And then with the amplitude, I can lower the amplitude or I can make the amplitude very high. So to make this sine wave, I'm starting from the left and working my way towards the right with a for loop. I'm drawing points. This I is just the X position as it marches across the screen. The Y is changing. This Y start is just how far down the canvas it starts. And I'm adding to that the sine of an angle times the amplitude. That's the important part. Sine of the angle times the amplitude. As I go across the canvas, the angle keeps increasing. So the sine of that angle keeps changing. You can see here that I'm multiplying that angle by the frequency in order to get the number of waves. And I'm multiplying all of this times the amplitude in order to get the height of the waves. So that is a sine wave. And then I also have a cosine wave. And the cosine wave is exactly like the sine wave, except it has cosine here instead of sine. Now let's take a look at making a circle. So this is a wonky circle, but I'm going to change this variance to zero and it'll be almost a perfect circle. To make a circle, you start with your angle at zero, which is over here, and you keep increasing that angle until you get all the way to pi times two. So this is pi times 0 0.5, this is pi, and pi times 1.5. As we keep going around the circle, we're taking the cosine and the sine of the angle, multiplying it by the radius of the circle, and then adding to that the starting x and y position, which is right here in the center. So the new x is going to use the cosine and then adding the x start, and the y position, the new y position, is going to be using sine and adding the y starting position. This formula is going to come up over and over again, so I want you to try to memorize this. A new x equals the cosine of the angle times the radius plus the starting x. And the new y is the sine of the angle times the radius plus the y start. We're going to see almost the same thing when we look at the meandering line. Now, let me get rid of this if statement. I'm going to show you the wonky circle. So if I vary this by 15, say, what's happening here is that the radius is changing randomly each time I go through the loop. So we have a starting radius, and then we keep increasing or decreasing that radius. 
But notice if I do that, I wind up in the ending position pretty far off from my beginning position. We want to fix that. So that's what these if statements are for. First, I do this if statement. I've kept track of the starting radius here. And what this is saying is you've gone all the way to here. And once you get to this position, let's get an average of the starting radius and the current radius. So I'm taking starting radius plus radius dividing by two to get a new radius. So that will start to make this line get closer to the beginning of the line. It's not perfect though, you see this. I can improve this circle a little bit also by changing the increments of the angle, do that. So the angle passes here and it continues going around and now when it gets to pi times 1.75, which is around here, it's going to take a new weighted average. Uh, it's going to weight the starting radius times 0.75 and the current radius times 0.25. So that's going to continue to get it closer and closer to the starting angle. For the line, I'm calculating the new x and the new y. And then after I draw the line, I'm taking the new x and putting it into the x taking the new y, putting it into the y. So you can think of this as old x, old y, new x, new y. So this line is being drawn from the previous xy position to the new xy position. All right, so that's the wonky circle. Now we can combine a circle with a sine wave. And that's what I have here. So I'm calling this the sine circle. And I've got the radius of the circle and I also have an amplitude and a frequency. I'm again going around the circle. Angle starts at zero and goes all the way around to pi times two with some sort of increment here. I'm calculating an x position from the cosine of the angle times the radius plus the x start just as I did before. In this case, instead of using lines, I'm using a curve vertex. I've got begin shape, end shape, and close here, and that makes the lines quite a bit smoother. The difference here is that I am changing the radius here. I've got radius plus equals sine of the frequency times the angle times the amplitude. So if I change the amplitude, let's say to 60, I get that. Uh, I can change the frequency, let's say to seven, and I get this. Let's change this back down to 20, say. Uh, I did get some interesting things around amplitude 30, I think, or maybe it was frequency 30. Let me increase that some more. Yeah, so that is an interesting shape. Or let's, let's try changing the frequency some more. So there's a 40 frequency, and it's very interesting that these aren't all uniform. I mean, you could uh, play with this some more to try to get something uniform, but uh, I do find this uh, a very interesting shape. Anyway, that is circle plus sine wave. So I'll get rid of that, and we'll bring in the line meander function. So if we look at the line meander function, I'm starting in the middle of the canvas. I'm starting with a random angle, and then I have a segment length. This line is made up of little segments. So how long are each of those little segments? I'm using a curved vertex again. I've got a begin shape here and end shape down here. Uh, I've got no fill on, and I'm not closing in this case. Here I've got new x equals cosine of the angle times the length plus the old x. This length is what was radius before. Now I'm calling it length because it's the segment length. The new y is the same as that, except it's sine, and we're adding the y. Then after I draw my curve vertex, I put the new x into the x, the new y into the y, and then I am changing the angle. So this is why the line is meandering. Angle plus equals random, negative pi times 0 0.1, pi times 0 0.1. Now if I change this uh, and make these unequal to each other, let's put a 5 here, I get something that starts to curve. 
I could make this a little higher and I get this. Let's see what happens if we change both of these. They're the same now, but they're higher. So we're getting a wavier line. We could lower the segment length and maybe increase this number, let's say to 500. We get something like this. So this is your meandering line. This is my string theory art and this used meandering lines. I would start a line in a random position and they would continue on until they got close to the edge. So if you remember the buffer canvases, uh, there's a black and white buffer canvas that is basically telling these lines whether they're getting close to the edge. I'm using sine and cosine to look ahead of the line, grabbing a pixel off the buffer canvas, looking at whether it's black or white. And if it's black, I think, I'm turning away from the edge. And if it's white, then I just keep going. This is another example from string theory. Uh, on this, the buffer canvas for this one, this is black around here, and then there's white here. Besides the meandering lines, this also has wonky circles. You can see there's a wonky circle right here, and there are also some very large wonky circles that are semi-transparent in the background here. All of these projects are using meandering lines, but they're on something called a flow field using Perl and noise. We're going to learn about Perl and noise flow fields in the next video. Sometimes in projects, you're going to come across instances where you're trying to figure out a side of a triangle based on an angle or an angle based on a side of a triangle. And so you're going to want to come here and bookmark this page. I will have a link to this in the video description. This is omnicalculator.com, the right triangle side and angle calculator. Besides just having a calculator here, it's got some useful stuff, how to find the sides of a right triangle, how to find the angle of a right triangle. So if I click on this, this says if you have two sides, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. If you have an angle and a hypotenuse, you can use this formula. If you have an angle and a leg, you can use this formula. And then if you need to find an angle, this gives you the formulas for finding angles based on the information that you have. So this is a really useful tool that I've come back to many times. That's going to do it for this video. Link to this code is in the video description as well as the other links. In the next video, we're going to be looking at Perl and noise. That's really interesting stuff. If you like this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications and comments. Love to read your comments. You can leave them down here or on my Discord. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.